give me one second. I will I will lecture the chi. What about the Okay, so now uh, um, this is the arrangement of the etrian artery. So we need to evaluate this part of the etrian artery, this part of the etrian artery, and we can evaluate the arcuate artery, but it has to be transvaginal ultrasonography. To see the arcuate artery, even the radial artery, you have to use transvaginal approach. But uterine artery, this uterine artery and this uterine artery, you can, you can identify and do the Doppler in transabdominal tool. So now understand, ultimate perfusion is passing from the uterine artery, uterine artery. And from this uterine artery, one of the branch also goes to the cervix. And it goes also in vagina, okay? So if this uterine artery in somehow it is partially obstructed or the flow limiting disease it has. There might be internal iliac artery thrombosis, yeah, blood uh, thrombia, yeah, atherosclerosis. There might be blockage at the junction or bifurcation of the aorta at the level of common iliac arteries. If there is some problem in the aorta, okay, there might be aortic aneurysm and the flow through the aorta is coming very less. So that time the atrial artery may have low blood flow. So I want to evaluate it. And also you need to know at what phase of the menstrual cycle the uterus needs more blood flow and during the pregnancy during the placental circulations fetal growth and development fetal needs more blood supply if uterus has multi twin pregnancy or multiple pregnancy the uterus needs more blood supply that's why the uterine artery must get more blood from the internal iliac arteries to get the more blood to supply because the demand is more distal demand is more always it has to be low resistivity index. That means the diastolic forward flow and diastolic flow is higher. There will be continuous forward flow, high forward flow during the diastole. Why? Because the demand is more and the resistance is less. So, we have to take the history from the patient. So, uterine artery, before entering into the uterus, we can see in the pelvic floor. We can see it. We can see it, enter it entering into the uterus. And we can also see that this uterine artery may have lot of tortuosity. Let me draw one here. This is uh, internal iliac artery and this is uterine artery. 
this could be very tortuous. Okay, finally I drew. Okay, so now look at here how it could be tortuous. So don't you think when it is like that, it may look like something abnormal. Sometimes we confused that it could be a, sometimes a lot of tissues are here. It looks like a ovary because the lot of cross section of the arteries looks like a follicles. We take the color. Then we see it is a blood vessels and it's pulsatile, jumping, it is an artery. And you know that this type of uh, dilated <coughs> uterine artery, especially during the pregnancy on the right side, it can compress the right ureter, leading to hydronephrosis in the right kidney. Okay, so we need to evaluate it. So, we can see the uterine artery in the pelvic floor and do the Doppler and according to the phase of the pregnancy, according to the <coughs> condition of the or uh, trimester of the pregnancy, the uterine artery you will see. If the pregnancy is there, then you will see the uterine artery has a low peak systolic and high end diastolic and the diastolic <coughs> flow will be more you're going to get the same thing in this uterine artery you're going to get the same thing in the arcuate artery why? because resistivity index is low if you do the Doppler Okay, you will see the peak systolic velocity is peak systolic velocity. It is not very resistive. It is not very resistive. And end diastolic velocity has more flow even at the end of the Diastole. Okay, that indicates the perfusion is good. If it is highly resistive, this is low resistivity index, and this is a high resistivity index of uterine artery. Look, the peak systolic velocity. Peak systolic velocity is high and look at the end diastolic velocity is low. It indicates high resistivity index. And if you see this woman is pregnant, there's a gestational sac here. Woman is pregnant. 
and the resistivity index is high, very high. So then interest is not getting enough perfusion. So this is very important. We need to understand that. Okay, iterian arteries on either side of the uterus. In the region of cervix, main iterian arteries will be seen as they cross the floor of the pelvis and approach the cervix. Arcuate branches may be seen sp spreading towards the endometrium the, with the radial artery. And normally, uh, it's a high impedance, high impedance flow when there is no pregnancy. But when there is a pregnancy, everything, every branches will start showing the low impedances. Okay, so and uh, and the rest of the pathologic um, pelvic pathology section i already discussed those things and i believe you understood um, uh, the situation um, you just understand that blood flow to the pelvic cavity can be increased physiologically and which physiology you need to understand ovarian cycle and uterine cycle and pregnancy you need to understand that these are physiologic during the physiologic certain condition the organ needs more blood flow so resistivity index is low that means resistance is low impedance is low impedance means the resistance to flow. Resistance. High resistance, high impedance. Low resistance, low impedance. And there could be certain diseases we might see. The organ is getting low flow. Organ is getting higher flow. And that can be evaluated by the Doppler. So that is one. And to evaluate the functional status of the ovary, corpus luteum, endometrium, uterus. So then we need to do the Doppler to understand that physiological phases are normal. Again, if we see the patient might have some pathology related with blood vessels or blood supply, we need to evaluate all those blood vessels by the Doppler. And as I mentioned, there are certain pathological conditions like ovarian functions, ovarian tumor, Ovarian torsion, ectopic pregnancy, placentation, ectopic placentation, written product of conception, pseudo gestational sac, fibroids, molar pregnancy, teratoma, pelvic congestion syndrome, endometrial carcinoma, ovarian carcinoma. So those are um, and other evaluative potential with the uterine perfusion and tubal patency. So those are the things you need to keep in your mind. Okay, so uh, sometimes we have to understand during the even pregnancy, so second and third trimester, they need more blood supply than the first trimester. So resistivity index will be more lower during the uh, third trimester when the baby is gain weight from seven to nine months. 
maybe maybe double in size okay so resistivity index resistivity index changes according to the trimester resistivity index changes according to the menstrual cycle and ovulatory cycle we have to keep that in mind so in that way we can apply the Doppler to evaluate the GYN situation or conditions nicely okay that's all for today and the next day I will talk about the application of Doppler in obstetric condition okay thank you very much